They called it the Bat's Wings. A new medium needed a new way to brand itself. And this was it. It was a model made of piano wire and brass and flashing lights created by Abram Gaines, a man who didn't own a television. Though he was an acclaimed poster designer whose work had included the logo for the Festival of Britain in 1951. His daughter showed me some of his working drawings and sketches for the bat swings. He, he never worked in the studio on his initial ideas. He always worked on public transport on top of buses. She also showed me the newspaper's reaction, almost all of it hostile. Well, here is a letter to a newspaper from someone who lists the ideas that it suggested this new symbol to him, and they were menace, darkness, Germans, spiked helmet, bird of prey, baleful eye, cage, torture, bandaged heads, whips, thongs, aerial bombs, attacks, pincer movements, and fascist flashes. They really didn't like it. Though. In due course, Gaines's bat wings were replaced by another model of a globe. For many years, television idents were mechanical models which used to sit in a cupboard with a television camera pointing directly at them. Older viewers may recognise this, a BBC Two ident from the 1970s. These discs used to revolve, coming to a halt to display the figure two. This was a BBC Two clock from that period, and this, from the 1980s, was a BBC One ident. The globe with a curved mirror behind it, so that as the globe spun, its distorted reflection turned behind it. Then, in 1985, this was replaced by the first computer-generated ident. In the last 30 years, television idents have grown ever more elaborate and witty. The man who created these for the BBC and discovered the hard way that hot air balloons rarely go where you want them pays tribute to Games's pioneering work. I think it is a wonderful piece of work, absolutely super piece of work. And I, the one thing that I always amuses me is that I was told that as soon as he had actually shot this and actually got one rotation out of it, it fell apart. And I thought to myself, brilliant. I'm glad it happens to others. <laughs> one challenge Abram Games didn't have to worry about, making the BBC stand out from among hundreds of other channels. In his day, there was just one. Nick Hyam, BBC News. Find out more about the history of BBC TV idents at bbc.co.uk slash history of the BBC. Right now, let's catch up with the news, the travel and the weather wherever you're watching breakfast this morning. We'll be back at eight. See you then.